Today I'd like to show you a time-saving trick in web design that applies the dry principle. The dry principle in computer science stands for don't repeat yourself. You always want to write as little lines of code as possible, but what the dry principle states is that you shouldn't be repeating lines of code either. So what do I mean by that? Well, the dry principle can also be applied to in web design. So first, before I begin the demo, let me just give you a tour of the example site that we're going to use. This is our home page. And then we have another page called desktop, tablet, phone, and then the about page. OK. So what do I mean by uh, repeating code? So in, when you first get started with web design, what tends to happen is you'll learn how to make uh, for instance the navigation bar along with everything else but when you are creating your other pages what tends to happen is you are repeating the code for the navigation bar because it's the same on every single page so here's the uh, code for the home page which I called index.html and as you can see here this is the code for the navigation bar in my desktop file, you can see that that code repeats itself, as well as the tablet, phone, and the about page. All of that is the same on every single page. But what happens if I decide, you know what, let me add another page to my website. I have desktop, tablet, phone, why don't I add a page for watch, which I already have pre-made. So let's say I want to add the watch page. So what I would have to do is copy this, paste that, and then change it to watch.html, and then want the button to say watch. Save it, and then refresh, and there we go. We have the watch button. But when I go to my other pages, you can see that the watch button disappears. And that's because I only added it to the home page. So what I would have to do is take that line of code and then go to every single page and paste it right in there. Now you might be asking yourself, well, it's only one line of code and you only have five pages, so what's the big deal? Well, the thing is when you have a more robust page, you might have more options here and then you might even have for each main option, you might have a drop down of other web pages that could um, also be accessed from the navigation bar. So if you have, let's say, a drop down of you know five or six other pages, and you have you know five or six choices in your nav bar, each with the same amount of drop down options, then you have you know a lot of web pages you're going to have to update just so that they can all access your new page in the navigation bar. So how can we do it where you only change the navigation bar code once and it applies to all your pages? And that's essentially what I want to show you today. <clears throat> okay, so let's begin. So we have our navigation bar code here with the updated uh, watch.html link. What we're going to do is we're going to cut that, go back to our files, in our JavaScript folder, we're going to create a new HTML file. We'll call it load navigation bar.html. And then we'll just paste that code right in here. Um, let me fix this up a little bit. Shift tab, save it. There we go. Okay. So this is our code for the uh, navigation bar. What we need to do now is also write a JavaScript that will tell each of these pages to access this file for the navigation bar. So let's title this load repeated divs.html. No, 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 dot js. Okay, I'm just going to leave a comment on the top so that anyone who sees this file will know what this page is for. Repeated divs for 
design site. And we'll end the comment, and then we'll start with our function. So we'll call our function load repeated divs. Sorry. Here we go. And we'll give it an ID of navigation dash bar. And when we call that ID, we need it to load. If you remember, that HTML file for the navigation bar was in the JavaScript folder. So JS slash load navigation bar.html execute and then we'll close that function and we also have to access the jQuery library so document dot ready function load repeated divs execute execute okay good so let's save that okay so now let's go back to our home page and we have to tell our HTML file to first access the jQuery library. So we can go to j so search jQuery Google APIs. That'll take you to the Google developer page. So Google's developers page has a host of libraries. So we'll click on jQuery, we'll grab the 2.x snippet, copy that and then we'll paste that there. Right there, okay, good. Along with that, we also have to tell it to access the JavaScript that we, JavaScript file that we just created. So script source equals, and then remember we kept it in the JS folder and it was called load repeated divs.js. Okay, so now that we have that, this page will know, let me access this jQuery library, let me access the file that we just created, and because of that, it now knows, it now recognizes this ID. So, so now we can go back here and just do div id equals navigation dash bar. Save it and we will see if it still works. And there you go. Let's just view the source code real quick. So you can see the div id dash navigation bar is being called and from there it accesses this file. So remember that's over here and that's where it's getting the code for the navigation bar. So you can see that the watch button is there. Does it work for everything else? Nope, because we need to do the same thing on all our other pages. So what do we do? First we have this here instead of the navigation bar. So control V, control V, control V, control V, and then also our scripts. Control C, control V, control S. Control V, Control S, 
Control V, Control S, and then finally, Control V, Control S. Okay, so there we go. So now if we access the other pages, you can see they all have the watch. Um, now, if we wanted to make another change, let's say after about we wanted to have contact page. So we can do contact, contact, control S, and go back here, control R to refresh, and you can see contact is there, and it's also on every single page. Of course, I don't have a contact page, but uh, at least the button works. Okay, so that can be applied not just for the navigation bar, but anything else that is repeated on your website. So if you've noticed, there's also this footer bar that repeats itself. So if I wanted to, I could do the same thing. I could copy that, paste that, this I would call footer bar instead. And this I would say load footer bar. Save that and I'd have to create the footer bar. So here's my footer bar. Control X. And then here I'd have to create text document, create. load footer bar dot html hit enter paste the code in there fix it shift tab save it and then here i would just do div id equals footer dash bar save it Let's test it out. Home page. Let's take a look at the code. View source code. View page source. And there you go. Footer bar. So then I have to do the same thing again. Control copy. And then get rid of this. Paste the new code. Oh, let me save it. Command S. There you go. Command V, Command S. And there we go. So it's all saved. And if I wanted to, I could change it. So let's say I made it web design. And then I also wanted to do the same thing for my navigation bar. Let's change it to web design control s so now i made changes in both the navigation bar and the footer bar let's see what happens here there you go web design web design and that's on every single page including this new page i just created earlier and i don't have a contact page so i won't bother testing that but that's how you can apply the dry principle to web design you can write one line of code for your navigation bar because that is always repeating itself and also your footer bar. Hope this was helpful. Please feel free to leave a comment or like this video.